don't like this game, guys. I mean, I really don't like this game. Now, hear me out before I... Hey, no, no, hey, scroll back up. Scroll back up. Stop going to the comment section. It's not done yet. Just because I don't like this game doesn't mean that I have a problem with people that do like this game. Hey, if you like this game, that's great. I'm glad it reached you and spoke to you in a way that made you feel whatever it is you could have possibly felt. But that's not why we're here. Tell me, Gene, what did you think of it? Oh, God. This is the most recent Mothership title in the Tales of series until next year's Tales of Arise comes out. So, let's see what interesting facts are in this one. Anyway guys, look, I have my reasons for not liking this game, but that's really not the point right now. This is a fact video where everything is supposed to be objective and opinions go out the window. We're here to only tell you what is important, and that is the facts. We are thebrotherhoodofgaming.com, and these are the top 10 facts about Tales of Berseria. Number 10, it's a prequel to Tales of Zestiria. Following the example of Tales of Fantasia and Tales of Symphonia, Tales of Berseria is a distant prequel to the previous game, Tales of Zestiria. Both games share loose connections to each other, just like with the previous two titles. Berseria takes place in the Holy Midgand Empire, which is a powerful ruling country. Events between the two games are separated by a thousand years, with an ending that foreshadows the events and sets up what takes place in Zestiria, for the most part. However, Zestiria and Berseria were not made at the same time, as Berseria did not start development until fall of 2014, right after Zestiria was completed. As you play the game, you will receive several hints of the connection between the two. Thanks to the distance in the timeline between them, you do not have to play the first game in order to play Berseria to understand what's going on. Both games are capable of standing on their own. So, like with Fantasia and Symphonia, the connection is there, if you want to look for it, but overall, they are still both independent adventures. Number 9. Hideo Baba did not return as producer. As Tales of Berseria was still considered a part of the 20th anniversary of the Tales series, many familiar faces returned for the development of this game. Examples include Yoshimasa Tanaka, Motoi Sakuraba, Matsumi Inomata, and Kozuku Fujishima, among others. But well, one notable change was that Hideo Baba did not return as producer. Filling in his shoes was Yashuhiro Fukaya. He explained in an interview that Hideo was promoted to overseer of the entire franchise. So with Hideo no longer in the producer's chair, Berseria would have a few major changes to it as compared to other games. For Hideo himself, however, his time as the one in charge of the series would not last long, as he would leave Namco Bandai in 2017. He would then join Square Enix as the president of a brand new studio. His first game was to be known as Project Prelude Rune, which he would also serve as producer. Unfortunately, this game would be cancelled, and Baba would leave Square Enix in 2019 due to a change in management policies. Number 8. It has a lead female character due to demands in the West. Now, Mila did come first, but technically speaking, Tales of Berseria's Velvet Crow would be the Tales series' first solo female protagonist. Originally kind and family-centric, she would suffer greatly due to the events of the Scarlet Knight and be transformed to rage-filled woman out for revenge. Now, Mila and Tales of Zillia would help open the door for Velvet, as she did become very popular with the Tales fandom. But a big reason for Berseria having a solo female protagonist was due to the demands for more female representation coming from the West. If you have not noticed, over the past few years there has been a bit of a culture war, especially here in the States. Many people have been demanding more lead female characters in video games. Yeah, because apparently we've never had those before. So through these requests, Velvet was born. But even still, there were still complaints as many felt her costume was too revealing. Yasuhiro Fukaya tried to explain that there was a reason for the way she was dressed and that the players would find out why as they played through the game. It's a bullshit reason, but it's there. But hey, there's just no pleasing some people. Number seven. The battle system is called the Liberation LMBS. Designed by Totsuro Udo, 
The linear motion battle system in this game would retain that smooth transition to battle similar to Zestiria, as well as reusing the blast gauge. But there were quite a few new changes along the way. In addition to the default free run and freely rotating camera, you can also assign multiple arts to the face buttons. This allows different arts to be linked together for various combinations, making it feel even more like a fighting game. The number of combos you can perform all depends on the soul gauge. Once the soul gauge is filled up, the character can perform their break soul. With this, characters can use their special action, which are widely different from each other as well as other abilities. On top of that, the LMBS has a mechanic called the Switch Blast. This can allow a controlled character to switch with another who is not on the battlefield. This will let the summoned character perform their own special unique art. Number 6. It features nods to earlier entries in the series. Since Berseria shares a loose connection with Zestiria, there is of course references between the two games. These include characters appearing in both titles, as well as objects and weapons, and the appearance of Aizen, who is the older brother of Edna. But since this is also an anniversary title, Berseria also has some homages to other Tales titles as well. Some examples include the Turtles, which first appeared in Tales of Graces, Aizen having a coin with Douse and Martel's images on it, the general stores being named after previous Tales characters, but the big one, and one we personally really appreciate, is the name of their transport ship, the Van Elsha. This ship takes its name directly from the same ship from the third game in the series, Tales of Attorney. The game even has a mention of Chat's grandfather, Van Ifri, who is the legendary pirate that has been mentioned in other Tales games too. However, in Berseria, it's quite a different story. Berseria is chock full of cute little Easter eggs for you to find, as well as reminders from many previous better games in the Tales lore. Sorry, <laughs> did I just say that out loud? Ho <laughs> ho! Number five. The main theme of the game is logic versus emotion. Throughout the history of the Tales franchise, each individual game has had its own unique theme when it comes to its storytelling. For some, it's a story about redemption, or responsibility, or uncovering one's true self. For Tales of Berseria, the game's main theme focuses on the battle between rational logic and the thirst for revenge. Early on in the game, Velvet sees her younger brother La Facette's murder, which ends up transforming her character. As explained by Bandai Namco, the game depicts the clash of emotion and reason, as the game follows Velvet on this adventure. She has strong emotions and comes into conflict with characters who have forsaken their feelings and now only use cold reason. The game tried to portray the main character Velvet as the embodiment of darkness itself. The intention was to show the inner conflict of a gentle woman driven to fear and hatred. Also, quick note, the game's title Berseria is based on the word Berserker, which was a legendary warrior of great uncontrollable power. Or a WWE wrestler from the 90s. Either one works. Number 4. A scene was altered for the Western release. Oh boy. When the new trailer for Tales of Berseria was debuted showing the English localization of the game, fans noticed that a key scene was altered as compared to the Japanese one, and it concerned the death of Lafayette. Spoilers. In the original Japanese version, Lafayette is run through in the chest by Artorius' blade. Upon seeing this, Velvet then cries out in pure rage. But in the Western version, that scene was removed entirely, and instead Arturius summons some sort of <laughs> magic light show and then kills him that way. Yeah. <laughs> On a personal note, this new scene was pretty lame. The original one was so violent and visceral, and because of it, you really felt for Velvet. But this new scene was really toned down. Bandai Namco explained that this was done to maintain the teen rating. They wanted to avoid a mature rating as much as possible, and originally thought that they would have to rework Velvet's outfit too. But instead, for Western audiences, at least seeing a child get sacrificed was decided just to be too shocking. So that adjustment was unfortunately made. Number three, the theme song Burn was performed by the band Flo. For Berseria, a high octane theme song was produced for it entitled Burn. This song was performed by Flo, and was used as both the main theme of the game and for the anime Tales of Zestiria, The Cross. Established in 1998, Flo was a rock band signed by Sony Music Japan's Kyo Slash Un music label. 
They are a five-piece band that consists of two vocalists, a bassist, a drummer, and a guitarist. As of 2019, they have released 34 singles and 11 studio albums. Along the way, the group has produced songs that have been used in quite a few animes, such as Naruto and Eureka 7. In the realm of video games, they performed the famous Chala Head Chala, which was used in Dragon Ball Z, Battle of Z, and Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Going back to Zestiria the Cross, the group would also perform the song Innocence, which was used as the anime's second ending theme song. Flo is a very talented group whose songs have been entertaining music fans for over 20 years. Number 2. It was the final Tales game for the seventh generation of consoles. When Tales of Berseria was developed, the decision was to release the game for both the PlayStation 3 and the PlayStation 4. But even though it was coming out on the newer console, it was still primarily developed for the PlayStation 3. While first developed for that system, the team would up-convert it, and a great deal of effort was put into the technical side, like with the frame rate. They announced that the game would be 60 frames per second smooth, and scene and battle ensuring that the whole game would be a smooth experience on the PS4. Despite that, however, the game still felt handcuffed to its older PS3 roots, especially when comparing it to other PS4 games. They still made it available for the PlayStation 3 in Japan, as many gamers there still played the majority of their console games at the time on that system. But Bandai Namco also made it clear that this would be the final Tales game that would appear on that format, as they believe it was time for them to let go of the past and move forward. Meanwhile, Western audiences would only have access to the PlayStation 4 version when it was released. And number one, the game would go on to sell over a million copies. When Basaria was first released in Japan, the game would sell a total of 249,723 copies in its first week on both the PS3 and PS4. This figure accounted for 87% of the game's initial shipment. When it was all said and done, this game would go on to sell over a million copies. Now at first that does look rather impressive, but considering that it took a long time to get to that number, it was still considered a bit of a disappointment. Some blame the poor reception of Tales of Hysteria for this, as many may not have been eager to purchase a game set in that world. Others noticed that later editions of the Tales games were slipping, suggesting that interest in the series was starting to wane. Tales of Berseria was received better on the whole as far as critics and fans go. Now, we admit we feel a little bit differently about this game as compared to other Tales fans, but hey, at the end of the day, to each their own. Honestly, beginning with Tales of Graces, you could really see a change in the Tales fandom, as these new games were given a ton of criticism. While we were happy to receive these games, many of the later ones would inspire some very mixed feelings and may be responsible for the current divides within the fandom. But no matter how you feel about them, each of these games do offer something different. Hopefully, there are Tales games out there that will appeal to your personal tastes as a gamer. And that's our list! Make sure to leave a like and comment down below. Okay, hey, look, at the end of the day, guys, once again, let me do some damage control just because I hate this game for reasons beyond my your wildest imagination. Doesn't mean that it's not okay for you guys to like it. If you guys like it, that's perfectly okay. It did its job, whatever the hell that was. So, my God, guys, can you believe it? We have actually done 16 whole episodes of the Tales of Fact videos? I mean, we did one for every mothership game in the series. Holy hell! Yay us. Oh, I mean, kind of a milestone. I mean, I mean, it's going to be kind of a break until Tales of Arise comes out, don't you think? But hold on, wait a minute. I guess uh, in the comments down below, why don't you let us know if you want to see fact videos for the other Tales games on the Tales franchise, the Escort titles, since we've run out of Mothership titles. Or let us know what other Tales of content you would like to see from us, because... Lord knows there's a lot of things we can do with it out there! So, meanwhile, you've been watching TheBrotherToGaming.com. I'm William Morris. If you want, you can check out the Teespring store down below in order to buy merch from us, in case you still like us after this video. And, uh, hmm, what will we do next? Hey there, everyone! Did you like this video? If you did, why not give us a thumbs up and maybe leave a comment and watch some more of our stuff? Also, if you really want to keep up with the Brotherhood of Gaming, such as myself, William Morris, or Eugene, you should really follow us on our Twitters, links provided below, so you can see what's coming up in the future. And since, you know, we have to play these games sometimes and record them, why not join us on our Twitch page where you can hang out with all of us as we do so and chit-chat about the games that we love so much. 
Lastly, if you want to help keep our dreams alive, you can support us in any number of ways, either by continuing to view our videos, like them, share them with all your friends and family and your peeps and your girlfriends, or you can also join our small Patreon and throw all your spare cash away. We'll even give you a shout out. Once again, thank you all and have a wonderful day.